Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about input statements in C++. So far in our programs, we've only been hard coding our variables. That means our variables, the values, we assign them ourselves within our files. Whenever we run our program, you see here we have our output. If I run my program again and again, we see that the results are always the same. And that is because we hard code our values. If I want the results to be different, I will have to go into the file and change something. So in this case, I'll change the age to 23. And we get 23 for age and I run it again and it's the same. In this case, it would be easier to test our code using user input. So before that, I just want to mention I have a name here and it's of the string type. And we haven't really talked about strings yet. But uh, I'll just introduce in this video, in the next two videos, we're going to be talking more about strings. To use strings, you would just do include string, and then you type in string, then you put in your variable name, and then string types are uh, an assortment of characters within double quotes. So remember, single quotes, character, double quotes, string. Okay, so let's get on with input. To get user input, you just have to say cn and two greater than signs facing right so two arrows facing right and you would put in your variable name and let's do so for the other two and a lot of beginners tend to forget uh, which direction these arrows go just remember the arrows go from source to target so in this case we're getting the source from the user so source is cn target is our variable name so it goes from cn to name so it goes left to right. So in this case, we have C into age and C into sex. All right, source to target. And with C out, it goes in the other direction. Our source is our variable name, age, and sex. We're putting it to the output stream. So we're going from right to left, source to target. So our target is C out, whereas our source are these variables. Okay, that's how you can remember the difference and which way the arrows go. So now if I run my program and I try to get the user input, you might notice nothing happened, but this space over here, our program is waiting for us to input values. So I'm going to put Kenny 50 and M. And you see we have Kenny 50 M. So actually let's get rid of this just so that it does not conflict with our results. And let's run a program again. This time I'll put Ken 25 and male and you see ken 25 and male oops let's run our program once more and we'll put uh kelly 21 and female and you see our results here since we're running the programs ourselves we know we had to input values right because we wrote this ourselves but if someone else were to run your program and they didn't see the code they might not have known so it's always better to add output statements so we'll say enter your name and then we'll do the same for the other two and then now when I run my program I can see this I'll say Kenny 23 and mail and there you go now another thing to note so far I've been entering my inputs line after line what we can do in C++ is if I were to run my program again I can actually input them all on the same line. I just have to separate them by space. So I can say Kenny, 23, male. And you see, I have my results here. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, how come enter your age gets printed before this line gets executed? And what about this line? How come they get printed line after line, but we have some input statements here. So how does this work? Well, actually, C out and C in are output and input streams. When I put in my three values all on the same line, we have this kind of like a queue type of thing where it's like I put in my name and the age and then sex. So there are three things in this input stream as soon as I enter this. So we need one for name. So there's one for name already. Then it prints enter your age and then we need one for age. So cn there's already a value in the input stream so it doesn't ask for user input so we just get the 23 we placed in earlier and then it asks enter your sex 
it checks. There's already one in the input stream. So it just takes this instead of asking us. So when you put in all three of your values in the same line separated by space, there will already be three values in the input stream. So we actually don't need this. And I can just say, enter your name, age, sex, separate it by white space. So now if I run my program, oops, that should not be there. Let's try again. I can go Kenny 23 M and you see, I get all three values. Now you might have figured it out by now. So over here, see how we chained like this, we can do the same with inputs. So we can go like this. And then if I run my program, let's put Kelly uh, 19F, you see our results. Okay, so that's C out and C in. Now, what if we were to input something that is, uh, I guess, for instance, our name, what if our name is actually composed of two parts? So instead of a single name, I want my phone name. So if I try to do Kenny Yip, and I'll put in 23M, what would happen? Let's run it. And we see Kenny was taken for the name, but Yip gets placed in the input stream, and that would be used for age. We can't really convert that to an integer because it's a string of characters. So let's try something here. If I were to run this, and I put Kenny, Yip, and an M. So how do we do this then? Inputting line after line instead of separating by white space. So if I tried like before, Kenny, uh, let's put 50 this time, M. You see all three values here. Now if I try to do the same thing, and I put Kenny, Yip, you see that once it detects a white space, it tells C++, okay, that's the first value we put in the input stream, and this is the second value. So we can't really do it this way as well. We can't input values separated by space to be taken as a single string. So what should we do? Instead of using C in, we should use get line. So let me show you here. So in this case, let's take out name. And I will use get line, and I'll pass in the input stream and our variable. So now when I run my program, I have Kenny Yip. So that's get line. And then I'll put in 23 and mail. And then you see Kenny Yip 23 and mail. Now if I were to do all this in a single line, will it work? Kenny Yip 23 mail. Nope, we still have C in the input stream asking for another input. So this is all one line that is from get line. And then I'll put in 25 and female just to show you that that was all in one line, all in one string for name. Okay. So when you're using get line, you have to separate them line after line. That's why it's get line. Okay. So it takes everything within that one line. And uh, yeah, that's C in and C out. You can't use C in unless you include IO stream. So remember, I stands for input, O stands for output, and stream, okay? So that's the input stream, and this is the output stream. All right, that's it for this video, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.